Well, the Rajya Sabha has just reconvened after repeated adjournments this morning. Let's cut across to uh, the Rajya Sabha where Piyush Goel is speaking. And tackle this COVID, give us some good guidance for the nation to also benefit from your uh, own experiences. And let us have this in a very positive and friendly manner, this debate, in the interest of the nation. And kindly take this up with the chairman, uh, your adjournment motion at a later date. Thank you, sir. Please, please sit, 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 please Please, 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 I am repeating this again and again. I am repeating this again. Go back to your seats. We want. We want. We want. We want. We High drama clearly continuing in Parliament with the Pegasus snooping row escalating. Names of politicians and journalists on the list of potential targets. Four opposition parties, as we've been reporting, have given notices under Rule 267 in the Rajya Sabha demanding suspension of all scheduled business in order to focus entirely on the Pegasus spyware controversy. And uh, members in the Rajya Sabha continuing to raise slogans and not allowing regular business to proceed. The Lok Sabha has been adjourned till 2 p.m. The Rajya Sabha was adjourned until now. It uh, reconvened at 1 p.m. But once again, we see the same scenes we've seen all morning. Protests, disruptions and uh, no business actually being conducted. Let's just remind you of what's happened so far on this big story. Opposition parties went into a huddle earlier this morning to decide on their strategy on how best to target the government. Leaders will meet again at 2 p.m. to decide if they are going to attend the meeting on COVID called by Prime Minister Modi at 6 p.m. Also, the Prime Minister addressed uh, BJP members of Parliament uh, today where he attacked the opposition and asked for party leaders to be prepared with more boots on the ground for the third wave of the COVID-19 pandemic. The Prime Minister, it seems, also uh, had very sharp words for the Congress party and Akhilesh joining us with the latest on that. Um, Akhilesh, uh, what more do we know of uh, the BJP's parliamentary party meeting and what the Prime Minister's message was to BJP MPs? Well, the Prime Minister uh, Narendra Modi, he addressed the uh, party MPs in the BJP parliamentary party meeting this morning and he was very aggressive, especially uh, attacking the Congress party. He uh, told the party MPs that uh, the Congress uh, is misleading the people of the country and they have not been able to digest their defeat. Uh, PM told the party MPs that the Congress party recently lost Kerala, Assam and West Bengal elections, but it's still, it's, instead of uh, looking in, into uh, towards uh, into, the, into the reasons of his defeat, it's attacking the party uh, and the BJP and the government every day. And Prime Minister also told the BJP MPs that they should go to the people and they should uh, tell them about the good work that the government has been doing and also about the positive work that the government has been doing, they should inform the people of the country. And uh, he also asked the party MPs to visit the public distribution system, uh, PDS shops, uh, 
uh, and tell the people that 80 crore people have been uh, given free ration uh, from the Modi government. This is one of the points which has to be informed uh, to the people of the country. And Prime Minister was very critical. And uh, also about the vaccination, he told that uh, the Congress party and the other All right. Uh, uh, Akhilesh, thanks very much indeed for that information. We do have to go back to the Rajya Sabha where uh, Malika Jun Kharge is speaking. Let's listen. Dr. Vina P. Sahasra Buddha. We want We want Dr. Anil Jain. Dr. Anil Jain. We want Shri Swapan Das Gupta. We want Please. We want We want We want We take up my mask. We want 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 I thank you for giving me an opportunity to speak on this rather important subject, which I think is, has concerned not only India, but the whole world. I think I would be fair in saying that when we met at the first, at the very initial point of the pandemic, there were a lot of us who believed that this would be a short-lived experience. We thought that perhaps even if 2020 was ruined, we would see a better 2021. But I think it's now very clear that not only are we talking about the second wave, We are not only talking about the second wave, we are also anticipating a third wave. It may be worth pertinent if we were to go back to history, we'd find that the Spanish flu epidemic which took place at the end of World War I led to about 50 million deaths. And of which most of it was contributed by the second wave. Now, I, I think so. I think it's quite clear now that what we are facing is a long drawn struggle. We are facing something akin to a prolonged war. And this prolonged war is something which is not only something, which is not something which affects only India. Please go back to your seats. Which affects Please go back to your seats, Mr. Vidya Sai Reddy. This is this is not a proper behavior. You are a seasoned and senior member. This is not proper behavior. I think. I may be right in saying this is completely if I was to start how do we deal with such a pandemic? And I think the answers are not necessarily easy. It's not necessarily easy. If I may start by saying so, if I may quote a, a line. So it is rather difficult and distracting to talk over this. I think all the same I'll try. I think a lot of us may be aware, or at least those, my friend Mr. O'Brien there might be aware of the passage I might be reading because the author of that passage is someone who the state government of West Bengal appointed in the Global Advisory Board to contain the pandemic. And I quote, the goal of social policy in these times of change and anxiety is to help people absorb the shocks 
that affect them without allowing those shocks to affect their view of themselves. In other words, how do we cope with the crisis without destroying the very esteem of people who have been affected by the crisis? This is a quote from the Nobel Prize winning Abhijit Banerjee. I think when we, in terms of social policy, have to decide, it's basically we have to take a balance of risks. That is what it's all choice in this matter. Policy is always about. It's about how do we balance the various risks at play. There is, of course, one way of just saying to seal off yourself from the rest of the world. Some of you may remember the case of Sir Isaac Newton, who in the time of the Great Plague shut himself off in a village for three years and produced some of his best and most creative works. Alas, that is a luxury I think we can ill afford today. I think we have to decide how much pain we can endure and how much relief we can give to people. I think when we decide that lockdown is only a temporary strategy, we take into account the fact that economic life must continue. We take into account the fact that we must try and restore as much as is possible the livelihood of people. We decide how much of relief through the state we can give to people. And all these are very important. The amount of relief the state has given to the people is considerable.